The South Congress Podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. Way to crack a Dr. Pepper open this started. morning. Crack a Dr. Pepper open. Yes, sir. Yo, it's the South Congress Podcast, episode 85. My name is Cameron. I'm Isaiah. We are recording in permanent RCRC. Uh, RCRD. RCRD Studios um, in the new wood room. Uh, don't say it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> a bit different than the last time we were here, as you can see. Um, technically, some, some wizardry is going on. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I guess we can just start with your week, sir. How's everything? Everything's okay. Everything's fine. I kind of feel like that little dog with the fire in the background. Like, oh, everything's fine. Yo, you was in the group chat while a little bit last night. Like, I I felt for you because you had faith. And I always say faith is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Having to, faith is a bad plan. But to be fair, we were we were in it. Mm-hmm. We just made some just really bad mistakes, and they capitalized on every single one of them. And Can we just, talk about what the score was when you said you were in it? 34 to 10. Yes. Hey, no, but legit, we really kind of were. Like, like they were getting chewed out because they should have been blasting us, but we were – honestly, if, if we don't – if we make some certain plays go right, we're, we're you know, neck and neck right there with them. And what was the final score, sir? 69-31. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Second so, half, we just uh, – nah, yeah. we didn't get it done. You weren't the only one that took an L. It wasn't just you. I also took an L. Really? How'd you take um, an L? What'd so, you do? This time. This is what I did this time, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of have to start this story at the beginning. So it must have been what, five, six years ago now. Yeah. I was um, I was visiting a uh, home in Maryland. And the day that I leave is the first day that Steven Strasburg starts. Like his very first start for the Nationals, right? Yeah. And so I'm in the airport eating a crab cake sandwich in D.C., yeah. watching his first start and watching him just just kill. So I'm like, okay, guess what? I'm a Nationals fan now. Like, this is it. <coughs> I wasn't really, like, an Orioles fan growing up, like my little brother was. Yeah. I wasn't super into the Orioles. Um, little birds, I like them. Yeah, I, the, the orange was weird. I don't know. And now like, I'm a Texas guy, right? And it's burnt orange everywhere. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was like, I'm a Nationals fan now. So I'm rocking with this team. They get Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper kills it. Team can't get out the first round of the playoffs to save their lives. Can't do it. Bryce Harper goes and signs with the Phillies for a billion dollars, right? And good on him. Like, I would never just say that. Get the money, yeah, get the money. Um, So then the Nationals win a wild card. And then they win a playoff series. And then they win another playoff series. So they're in the World Series now. Like, crazy times, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm... University of Texas grad. So most of my college friends are from Dallas or Houston. This is kind of how it works. Yeah. So most of my Twitter friends are Astros fans. And I'm like, yo, I really want the Astros and the Yankees to go seven games. Um, And my man uh, Bradford was like, man, I can't take that stress. So what do I tell him? What do you tell him? Well, dive in, little nigga. Let me do my thing. (laughs) (laughs) And Twitter got a hold of that, and they were like, guess what? You're suspended for a week. So. That's already twice you've been suspended, right? It's been. Well, technically, it's three times. Um, Once I got suspended for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Once I got suspended, just I deleted an old tweet because the. uh, What do they call them? The barbs. The barbs were on my ass. Digging up all the old tweets. Um, So this is like the first long one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's rough, man. (laughs) Because like people are asking, like, anybody seen Cam? Like, is Cam good? And I have to DM them. Like, nah, I'm good. I just was a little rambunctious one day. So Wednesday, I'll be back. I'm just going to drop the pod video right on Wednesday. I I think I'm really going to do T Grizzly first day out. (laughs) That's cool. Because I'm in Twitter jail right now. So for the time being, Twitter is actually wholesome. And Twitter you, was, but I'm you, not there. No. Well, now it's wholesome. Because now, guess what? We don't see no porn links anymore. None of that stuff. Keep it Christian, sir. I went and saw Joker. <laughs> um, I went and saw Joker on Tuesday night. And, I mean, it was, you know, Joaquin Phoenix killed it. Like, absolutely smashed it. One of the best individual performances I remember in a movie, right? Not a good comic book movie. 
at all. Like it's it's not. Um, does that matter at this point though? If his performance was that great, it does matter mm. because I don't think it's something you can recreate. I mm. think people are going to try to, but a Joker's that unique character that doesn't actually have a backstory. Yeah. So you can kind of do what you want. Like okay. you can make up a whole fake ass movie, like they did. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, look great, shot in New York, look dirty and dusty. Um, well, that's New York, so yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they had it to where he was like a smooth 20, 30 years older than Bruce Wayne. And so they weren't really yeah. like contemporaries. Um, yeah. He did some stuff to his body, man. It was like Christian Bale on The Machinist. Like, he was a smooth 150 pounds. And Joaquin Phoenix is probably like, what, 6'1", 6'2"? Mm -hmm. Like, body falling apart. It was crazy. Holy um, crap, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, if you haven't seen it by now, like, that's on you. Like, I can't do nothing for you. Joker spoilers. Man, I knew... Stream it, guys. They had stream him, it. They had him fucking Zazie Beats. And I was like, yeah, this is impossible. This is impossible. There's no really? way. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. And it turns out he wasn't. It was all in his head. Thank God. Because there wasn't no way. He was broke. He was living with his mama. He had bad hair. Those he, kind of, he didn't do no push-ups. Those are the kind of people that get pussy, though. <sighs> well, I mean, they in, did, at least in San Antonio. They did yeah, both but, live in the hood. But yeah. I don't know, man. But, uh, again, great performance. Um, on its own, like a good movie. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they have like Bruce Wayne hanging around, it's like, okay, the reason that the Joker works so well in movies is because there's Batman to be the constant, to be the opponent, to be the one doing the right thing. Nope, it was just niggas wilding out the whole time. Nothing wrong with that. He killed three white dudes on a sub. Um, he killed he killed his ex coworker for Good. snitching. Good. Um, he killed Robert De Niro for just being on TV. Damn. Um, Not Robert De Niro. Yeah, he killed uh, his psychiatrist for just asking him questions. He was I can see out. that. Was, <laughs> I can see that. It all yeah. makes sense to you. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely cool. Does. Um, I still got to go see it. Like I, I, I feel like shit. I waited so long. I'm being the Dollar just, Theater. <clears throat> just go stream it. I think I'm going to watch it. Because okay. I feel like that's not fun to watch, like, just on the computer at work. I need to be, like, immersed in what's going on. You feel me? Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> like the like the old-ass lady yesterday when I was trying to get by when they were taking the whole sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse me. Sure. Wow. This is the kind of this, this house it's going to be in Westlake? Okay, cool. <sighs> you know who would fit right in Westlake? Who? Gina Rodriguez. Really? She can't stop saying dumb shit, man. So, Gina Rodriguez, actress from uh, Jane the Virgin, was on IG Live getting her hair did. Fuji's came on, and what did she say? What does she say? Frontin' niggas give me heebie jeebies. Which is okay if, like, you don't have the problems that you have. What problems are these? So we talked a lot last week about comic book movies, right? Yeah. We were talking about how um, Jennifer Aniston was like, there's too many of them. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, Gina Rodriguez was like, wow, um, these Marvel movies are so diverse. When are they going to get some Latinos in them? Right? Okay. Which is okay if like, you didn't see Ant-Man, who's like point man is a Latino man. Um, and Gina Rodriguez, who claims to be Afro-Latina, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so is uh, so is Valkyrie from the Thor movies. And so is Zoe Saldana from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So she wasn't actually saying, like, when are people like me going to be in movies? Well, she was, but actually, that's exactly what she was saying. She wasn't saying when are... Latina is going to be in movies. She was saying, when are light-skinned, non-African identifying Latinas going to be in these movies? So there's that. Yeah. There's also the time where she was um, being interviewed uh, with a co-star, and they asked the co-star how she feels about being such an influence to black women. And Gina Rodriguez, who was not being asked the question, jumped in and said, no, all women. Bitch, nobody was talking to you. <laughs> Jesus. And then she came out and apologized and she was like, well, you know, the, I can't, you know, talk bad about the community of color because I'm a person of color. Wouldn't say black. Like, wouldn't say it. 
Then she turned around for her second apology and was like, yeah, well, you know, my dad identifies as black, so I really can't. Like, no, bitch, just, just shut up. Like, nobody's asking you to do any of these things. Like, uh, I was on Snapchat. Okay. And it does that thing where it's like, follow such and such that's close to you, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, bet. So I follow this little girl. First of all, this little ratchet chick ain't never been in anything but a white tee, which should have been my first warning sign, right? She just said a white tee. And her uh, her at name is like, I don't know. Let's just call her uh, Veronica. That sounds right. Veronica, but then it's like the cat emoji and the wet emoji and then the smiley face emoji. So you you know what the fuck going on, right? So you happen to bestow upon it was Snapchat. porn Snapchat. It, it wasn't me. Fans only account but, kind of thing. So I'm like I watch it. You know my phone's never Snapchat Premium. My phone is never have, never has a volume on. Yeah, like ever right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like okay, she she's talking like she's saying a lot of shit. Soon as I hit the volume button, nigga, 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 immediately had to unfollow. Why are you following just random people? It's Snapchat. Like I'm not trying to have a conversation on Snapchat. Who do you talk to on Snapchat? I talk to people that I actually know. But I don't talk to anybody on Snapchat. I'm watching them live their lives. So you just lurk on, on random people you don't know? Yes. Wow, okay. <laughs> Does that remind you of somebody? Yeah. <laughs> so Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> yes. Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, <laughs> was, that really could be you in like 20 years, man, if you're not careful. Stop it. <laughs> was indicted for... Um, like sexual harassment. Okay. Right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's rough. Like, nobody wants to be accused of that, right? Mm -hmm. You know how many people accused him? How many? 14. 14 people accused him. And that's the crazy thing. Not of rape. They but always, of like always sexual. Comes out in droves. It's weird. But of like sexual assault. Yeah. Like, so he's just out there touching people. I was looking on Twitter and this girl posted, I too have a Cuba Gooding Jr. story. And it's like a picture of him drunk next to her in a club. And she was like, yeah, he saw me. He, we met. We shook hands. Ten minutes later, he's talking about eating my butt. And then, as I'm trying to walk away, he put his thumb in my ass like a bowling ball. Radio is a nasty nigga. <laughs> like, I, what do you even say? I wonder if he talks in radio voice while he's getting it on or something. Did you watch the uh, the OJ show with him on FX? No, I didn't. He, I don't know if he's like really devolving just into a a shell of what he was or if this is who he always was. But when I look at that, when I look at him on the next season of American Horror Story, when I look at him in Norbit, when I look at him in American Gangster, I see it. I see it. And so who knows if he's ever actually going to do any time for any of this. Like he's probably going to have to pay out the ass. Like for a bunch of stuff? Probably. You seen Jerry Maguire? Mm-hmm. That's a nasty nigga, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, again, like nobody, I would never want anybody to be accused of rape because I don't want anybody to rape. Like that's, you know, yeah, nobody wants yeah. that to happen. Mm -hmm. But like, yo, um, 14 people saying you groped them? Like, that's not okay. Touching people already isn't okay. Yeah. 14 people, thumb in the ass like a bowling ball. Through the dress, it's a nasty nigga, man. Like you know, now you picturing it? I am yeah. right now. Like, she like, wasn't naked. Shit. No, she was fully clothed. Yeah, I know. The I, dress. I'm just kind of like Jesus Christ, man. Like strong thumb ass nigga. Look at him. That's definitely that's the face of a nigga that's guilty. <laughs> Why are you examining? I'm just laughing. I'm just it's just getting the visual of it. It's just like Jesus Christ. Like all right, well, well, let's get one more out of there before we take a short break, right? You want to talk about your man, Pastor Wilson? Yes, let's do it. Oh, so <laughs> I'm in the barbershop. I'm getting fresh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my, my barbershop is actually an extension of a church, right? Like really? The, when I say an extension of a church, like they take the name from the church that they go to mm -hmm. and like, you know, the pastors and the deacons, they all come through there and a lot of the congregation. Um, I'm glad they weren't there for this conversation. <laughs> so I'm in the chair. I'm getting cut. The other barber is like, yo, y'all seen that Pastor Wilson thing? And me, I'm like, yeah, cause you know, Twitter. I'm like, mm -hmm. I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. He came over there with the phone, man. Pastor Wilson, face 
deep. Yes, I, in I the seen pussy, it. Dog. Yeah, I saw this Face morning. Face deep in the pussy. And you knew it was him because you could see the goatee. All you see is white goatee yep. working. You see a tongue having a seizure. Dog, he was going in. And then, and then, the power of Christ. Compelled him. Oh, he went right to the booty, man. Yeah, he did. That wasn't the first lady. That was not the first lady of the church. What's first? They have actual titles like that? Like first yeah, lady? The, the, yeah, she's the first lady. That's corny. The pastors. I, you, you, I'll say this. Oh. In, in in my experiences in church, the first lady has always like really carried herself with dignity. She's who a lot of the women are comfortable going to. A lot of times she initiates like the the fellowships and the barbecues and stuff like that. So so I yeah, it, it's but outside of that, she definitely got her back blown in the damn bathroom. That was not the first lady <laughs> yeah. who whose ass was cocked up up under that goatee. <laughs> That stomach was quite big, too. Well, they found her. Did they really? They found her. Who was it? I don't know. It's a lady from Texarkana. Oh, um, shit. And, and she was not. It was, Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it was her. The body size matched up. Now, I, I'll, give, I'll say <laughs> Pastor Wilson. Pastor Wilson was probably a smooth 172, give or take. She was not. No, that, that stomach was, said like at least 230 plus. She was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if you need her to pull on the ISO. She got you. If you, oh. play, if you play tug of war, you put the rope around her at the end. She's the anchor. So we were talking in the barbershop yeah. about ramifications of this. Mm -hmm. And what's rough about it is if a pastor gets caught cheating, you know, any type of infidelity, he's able to get through it. I've seen it happen. I've watched – I see some crazy things in the church, man. I, I believe it. Um, I see preachers get away with a lot. And the thing yeah, is, people are hoodwinked. They tend to come out of it clean. Mm -hmm. The women that they're involved with usually have to change churches. Like, it's sad, but that's kind of how it works. I mean, the patriarchy, that, man, it's a nasty thing. No, it's, it's just really just kind of like, like a lot of. You know, as much as, you know, people like going to organize religion, you know, that's fine, too. Mm -hmm. But even like the whole spiritual thing, too, like that's a crock of shit as well. Like they should take more heat because I feel like the whole spiritual thing, mm -hmm. that's more dangerous than actual organized religion. Because you they, people like that literally prey on the weak. They prey on the ones that are like having going through problems and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And they get them in their church. And then they film all the shit. And all of a sudden, this motherfucker went from saying this to all of a sudden, blessed day and all this bullshit. And then they do the whole like born again thing. It's mm. it's gross, you know. Yeah, I know. But I mean it. But it's like Pastor Wilson though. If he was a real one, this is why somebody <laughs> said this is going to be your last episode. Fuck him. Um, yeah, but no, I agree. I have issues with the spirit too. The spirit of Halloween be taxing, dog. Y'all are some nasty niggas, man. A <laughs> hundred dollars for a Power Ranger costume. No boots. No gun. Can't even call the Megazord. Niggas are nasty. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a short break. When we come back, let's talk about naked haircuts. Nice. Let's do that. <laughs> South Congress and the Pro Wrestling Torch East Coast Cast have two online stores to buy shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, notebooks, and more. Visit redbubble.com and tpublic.com and search Seahawk to see all of the merchandise. We run specials every few weeks, so join the South Congress and East Coast Cast Facebook fan pages for all the details on our online specials and promotions. Yes, oh. especially being in the position that he's in, absolutely mm -hmm. would. Let's talk about another position. All right. So I have a friend who goes to like a lady barber. Mm -hmm. And... Which is fine. Like, it's, you know, strictly platonic, and she does a perfectly fine job. Okay. I've seen these barbershops, and, you know, they have, like, the barbershops geared towards men, like, roosters and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I've also seen, like, on Twitter where a lady will, like, she's, like, a sexy barber. Like, she straddles you while she's lining you yeah, up Yeah, I've and seen shit. that, too, yeah. I don't get that because I, you know— I mean, I get it. But. For me, like, I also don't like Hooters. 
Yeah, like, the food's not that good. Twin Peaks has a great fucking chicken sandwich, but that's different. They got like, pretty good uh, chicken and waffles. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just not. To me, the way the world is set up, mm-hmm. um, if you just really want to trick off on a woman, and also eat uh, chicken tenders. You can combine those in a place that isn't a restaurant full of women being tricked off on, and everybody's eating chicken tenders. Just go to Sugars. Um, you should cut out the middleman and just go to the strip club. I agree. Yeah. Um, go to Sugars so or go to All Stars. So I say all that guys. to say, you know, with these sexy barbers, right? Mm-hmm. Niggas then took it to another level. So apparently, there's a barber shop you can go to now where the barber will get naked and like have his dick out. While you getting oh, I was saying like a, like a woman I'm like oh man no nah. like, like yeah he just got his dick out and like you know you can get a cut and like but his dick's out though and he's not wearing clothes and he's just flopping around and there's barbasol and combs and you know but I mean of course you're still wearing like the smock you yeah got the, you know so you're not you know Should I'd hope so <laughs> but apparently like it's gotten real far and like the barbers are doing it and then dudes are you know. Going hand solo up under the, yeah. So, I say that to say. Y'all some nasty motherfuckers. No, and I've seen people like, (laughs) um, and I want to make sure, like, what my point is. It's not about it being a man doing it. I also don't want women doing it. I don't want anybody being sexy to me while I'm getting a haircut. This is a business. Yeah. Like, could you imagine? Cut my hair and talk to me. That's it. Imagine if when you ordered your chicken nugget, somebody hand you a 20 piece and they got one titty up in the air while they handing you the 20 piece. I'd be fine with that. I no, don't be <laughs> fine with that. I don't want like I want my stuff separate, dog. I don't want. Can I get an extra barbecue sauce? Remember packet, what please? happened to George Costanza? Yes. When he was doing that, he was fucking, and he had the music on. He was listening to the Yankees on the radio, and he was eating a pastrami sandwich. Mm-hmm. You can be doing too much. Like, <laughs> you just go. You get your hair cut, and then go hit something, or hit something. And then shower, because you need to wash and wash your hair. Yeah. And then go get a haircut. Like, there's enough hours in the day. We don't have to, like, combine everything. This ain't you-verse. You don't have to make everything a bundle. This coming from the guy, Unlock, Safari, X Videos, Latina BBW, longer than 30 minutes, filter. That's one thing. <laughs> That's one thing. Like, I'm not also playing Skyrim while I'm doing it. No, you're definitely in a Popeye's chicken sandwich while you're rubbing one out. I would, but. I'm sorry. I had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> see? You see? No, nah, man. I, I just, like, again, that's my biggest thing. Like, love who you love. Mm-hmm. Be attracted to who you're attracted to. That's your business. But keep that shit outside of business. I, I just, mm-mm. Imagine Mike Ladd did that shit. Hey. <laughs> Want to see something? <laughs> oh, no. What's up, slut puppy? Oh my goodness! I want all my barbers. I want my barbers wearing extra layers now. I'm definitely you want them the bring, extra large tall tee. I'm bringing my barber the, a hoodie the, next the, time the, I go the Sean in. Johnson tall hey, tee. Throw this on too, dog. Mm-mm. Oh, you see, Lil Ken dropped the list of the top uh, 50 San Antonio rappers. Who do you put as number one? Uh, not himself. I think he was number two. Mm-hmm. It was somebody. Uh, Game established did not make the cut. Really? We did not make the top 50. I think everybody in third degree was top 15. But we did not make the top 50, huh? He's still upset that... He's not mad. Yeah, he is. No, no. I mean, no, he's ups- He's still upset because... I think Tone Dog at- was there. Huh? I think Tone Dog was there. That's like the super watered down uh, Lil Rob and shit. I mean, wow. he's a good, nice guy. Also, but- Free Marky G. Um, yeah, oh. I did my research. Free Marky G. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did. I looked. I, I saw what was going on. That's, yeah. That's fine. Um, <laughs> as long as he didn't do it. No, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. It wasn't like a thing like that. He's, yeah. Okay. Because if it's, yeah. Mm-mm. Okay. So, yeah, that's a perfect segue. Yeah. So, you and I, um, growing up where we grew up, mm-hmm. all of our friends aren't squeaky clean. Hell no. You know. Um, Literally and figuratively. They're not, they're not all perfect people. No. Um, I think that. Everybody that we associate with, that we claim to be friends with, we have a pretty solid moral compass, though. Yeah, for the most part. Um, yeah, give or take. So Ellen mm-hmm. was at the game. Okay. Posted up with her BFF, George Bush. Now. W. Bush. W. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Other Bush is dead. 
So is he dead? Yeah, he died. Oh. Yeah, he oh. died like a couple months ago or something like oh, that. Oh, white people come and go. I don't know. <laughs> that's why that's why they banned me from Twitter. There so you go. um <laughs> yeah. you know, there was some backlash. Mm-hmm. And Ellen was like, uh, yo, like apparently I have to answer for who my friends are and I have friends with different beliefs. We're not all the same and we need to be nice to people, you know, all that fuck shit. Yeah. Um and Elton John came out and was like, yo, y'all need to leave Ellen alone. Like, Ellen's the homie and this and that. And then they found out that Elton John performed for a million dollars at Rush Limbaugh's wedding. Rich people don't give a fuck. Nope. Like, and I'm not they even just saying. They do. I'm not even just saying rich white people. Rich people don't give a fuck. That's true. Like, I think we've seen, like, once you get to a certain tax bracket, these normal people problems don't affect you. Nope. You don't give a fuck. Mm-mm. Like, I remember... My OG Bruce Mitchell telling me about how back in the day, you know, Junkyard Dog, the wrestler, was like the biggest, one of the biggest acts in Southern wrestling, period, right? Yeah. You know where he used to hang out? Where? At the goddamn Klan clubhouse. Swear to God. Doing what? They used to invite him over to kick it. For real. Like? The Klan used to say, hey... You're not like the rest of them. Come hang out with us. You know? And and to in his defense, in Junkyard Dog's defense, mm-hmm. you really can't just say no. Uh yes, you can. In the sixties, you, you in Louisiana, you really can't just say no. And, and what I mean by that is I'm trying to think of what would have happened if he would have said, nah, I'm not fucking with y'all. He's not Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it's it's different. He's a junkyard dog. He's, He's yeah. small as fuck. He could have he could beat up all of them all he, he one by one. He could have taken one. the whole clan. That would have yes. been great. I'm gonna write that comic book now. Yeah, junkyard dog versus the. <laughs> yeah, there you um, go. See, I gave you an idea. See, see, now you want a superhero movie. There you go. I'll I'll watch that <laughs> one. But yeah, they. I'm they, sure I have to get a part in it. They all just kick it, dog. Like rich people who just all kind of fuck with each other. Go to the same parties. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I, I, that's why I'm, I don't believe none of these people. Like you know, like the the ones that scream the loudest, you know, for equality and shit. I don't believe none of them. Mm-hmm. They're full of shit. They're they're all the ones that scream the loudest are the ones that that are doing that are the worst. Mm-hmm. Those, all of them, including Ellen. Like that. That's just. I mean, you know, her friends are friends, but I mean, if you're over here, if you made your whole platform and shit based off of being one way, mm-hmm. and they're doing some fuck shit like this, like yeah, you're the fun, fr- friendly, whimsical lesbian lady. Yeah. And you over here rocking with George Bush. You're rocking with who, somebody who despises who you are. You gotta rem- like. I remember back in college, uh, my man Joe Price was telling me like, uh, you know, there were people he was close to who were voting for George Bush based off of family principles, and we mm-hmm. know what that means. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to go from that, George Bush running on the family platform. Uh, you know the white Christian, white super inclusive, or I'm sorry, super exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know this is who we don't rock with. To be posted up with Ellen at the game, all buddy buddy. Now Michelle Obama's also friends with George Bush. They be buddied up. She be giving them candy and stuff. To me, and I'm not making no excuses for nothing Obama's done in office, mm-hmm. but to me, you kind of have to do that in that position. But yeah, I think the Obama they're like, they're like in political. But they're like in political type yeah, positions. Yeah, Ellen like, does not need to rock with George Bush at all. That's what I'm saying. But but yeah. it's like that too. But it's like you know, Michelle Obama ain't kicking with him at a Spurs game or you know at a at a Jets game or something like that. Like if it's a political shit, like if a political person died funeral, it's like okay, yeah, here's the fucking Butterfinger, get out of here. But, that part. Yeah. So you feel like people aren't genuine? No, they're not. With their talks about equality and freedom. Let's talk about Daryl Morey. Yeah. So a couple of weeks back, Daryl Morey comes out and says he supports the Hong Kong protesters. Everybody's kind of talked about this on every podcast one way or another, from, you know, sports to video games because of what happened with my man in Blizzard who lost all his winnings Mm -hmm. because he spoke out against the Chinese government, even though now he has not back. Blizzard's full of shit and they're right down the road we should go bang on the door um <laughs> but I, I i don't have a lot to add to it um daryl Morey wasn't wrong to me lebron wasn't super wrong um this is my issue with it and this is how i said it on twitter i'm remembering that time that you and i was at the dope spot in heritage right 
Yep. Imagine if social media is what it is back then. Mm Mm-hmm. And niggas are just on their phones watching stuff. Mm -hmm. And somebody who knew that we were there in the dope spot said, guess what? Them niggas is selling some bullshit. I'm Cam and Peanuts, homeboy. And them niggas are selling shit. They are stepping on the dope in there. Even if it's true, nigga, we're in there. (laughs) We're in the spot. Yeah. You can't be talking about dope being stepped on and stuff because our safety is at risk. Mm -hmm. So Daryl Morey, who ain't said a goddamn thing about Black Lives Matter, who ain't said a thing about uh, Stop I Can't Breathe, had nothing to say about that, Mm -hmm. was real cute with the Hong Kong shit while we had players over there in that country. If they couldn't get out, what then? Like me, and and I I stepped away from it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like on Facebook, I used to be Mr. Facebook, political, this is right and this is wrong guy, right? Yeah, I remember that so shit. So I was all on my... I team. was actually really entertained by when you used to do that. That was actually oh, pretty yeah, funny. I, used, I, I miss I you doing to, that shit. I used shit. to call people idiots because yeah. they were being idiots. And you like screenshot them. It was fucking hilarious yeah, and they tried to defend it. We used to dog people. Yeah, but, I love that. You need to go um, back to that again. He's still that a bitch, Andrew day. Harper. So... <laughs> um, okay, so I used to be on my Free Palestine shit hard, right? Mm-hmm. And then... My homeboy, who, like, did a tour in the Israeli army, was like, yo, Cam, like, I feel you, but it's a little bit deeper than that. And, like, we sat down and had a talk, and I was like, oh, I'm going to shut the fuck up because I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, that's certainly not me making light of anything anybody's going through. Yeah. But it is me saying, far be it from me to jump into a conversation when I don't have all the information. Like, that. that's not cool. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Even if I was right in the moment, if I don't know everything that's going on, I might need to step back and re-examine some shit. And and dope up him to pull me aside, not to get mad at me, but Mm -hmm. just like, yo, this is what I was dealing with. I just want you to know. And I'm here with you now. And you know me, and we rock. So I was like, okay. You know, I okay. So Darren Morey, who was not wrong in his comments, was certainly selective with them shits while people could have been in some real trouble. And this shit with LeBron will blow over. Like, a lot of people who are super critical of what he was saying just started giving a fuck about what he was saying. Yeah, in a way. I mean, yeah. But, I mean, it, it does. I guess this comes, it does look kind of bad. Because, I agree. Because, you know, like, and, you know, like I said, it, it's great. You know, he shouldn't he shouldn't have to just shut up and dribble. If he wants to speak out about something, mm-hmm. about um, something he feels like is unfair, mm-hmm. he should be allowed to. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I, I guess the way the his comments came out, it kind of came out like in that, I guess, I don't know, I guess the best way to kind of explain it, even though I'm probably wrong, but fuck it, I'm just still shooting from the hip anyway. I don't know how wrong I am about it. But it, it, it's kind of like that 19 kind of 60s, like that white liberal family that wants, you know, oh, let's mm-hmm. give like, you know, black people rights. But then it's kind of like. But don't live over here with yeah, your rights. But, you know, not in my backyard, yeah. you know, kind of thing. That, that's yeah. kind of with that. LeBron is white flight. I mean, well, because again, he's he needs he, to drop some white sneakers and call them white flight. <laughs> but I, I guess it's just the way like comes off that you know. I mean, yeah, he he wants you know social justice here in this country, which is great. But mm. he should also want social justice everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it's, and, it's and difficult. I guess and I guess yeah. for him to kind of kind to come out mm. and to basically be like, hey, you know, mm. shut the fuck up about these protesters. Mm. Like that's. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just saying. What he said later, I didn't like. But mm-hmm. if my life's at risk, I'm gonna say some wild shit too. Yeah. They got the best dope. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna do some dope right now, <laughs> just to prove it to you. I gotta get out of here, baby. Shit. Okay. Um. That wraps up about everything we have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't tell you this show last night. Now what happened? Ah. Uh, I'm at H E B. Mm-hmm. Looking for a shirt to wear today to tailgate. Right. Yeah. These two guys come up to me. They're like, "Hey, you're a UT fan." Like, yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. Um, he's like, oh, didn't UT just uh just play Florida? I was like, no. And they're asking me just a bunch of questions about like UT and living in Austin and what I do, and I'm like, some something ain't ain't right. Like yeah. it's it's nine thirty at night at H E B in the store or in the parking lot in the store. Okay, and he's this one white dude is like in a blazer nine at night. Another white dude is in like a, I don't know, sweater vest or something. 
and they're just talking to me, and they're like, "Well, so um, sweater vest and yeah. a blazer." Like, so so are you um interested in any supplemental income? I was like, "Yeah." And like, okay, well, let me take your number. We could talk about some maybe a business opportunity uh, here uh, later in the week. I was like, "Great, that sounds fantastic." <laughs> I took that. And I gave the nigga my number. As soon as he texted me, blocked. Like niggas are definitely trying to sell Herbalife or uh, Chianti <laughs> or whatever the fuck or a Chianti. Chianti is a fucking a wine or some shit. But yeah, <laughs> niggas are still doing that. Wow. And then I saw them in the lot talking to other people. I was like, yo, this shit is wild. Like I just I just wanted to get some damn oatmeal, man. That Herbalife cult, man. Oh, that's hilarious. This week coming up. Mm-hmm. Of course, South Congress Monday, Demon Dust on Tuesday, Goose Down on Wednesday. I still can't say the name of the show. Um, what's the fun in that? It'll be Thursday. Um, what's happening Friday? I have another game. Okay. I thought you were going to talk about that show I was going to ignore. No? Okay. I, am I getting the green light for it or no? Tell me about the show. Oh, mine? We're, we're, the, the right here, we're live right yeah. here on camera. Okay, yeah, Lay yeah, it out. yeah. Okay, well, he threw a curveball at me. Well, basically, no, you're going to edit this out. Fuck you. No, I'm not. I'm listening. What are you talking about? I'm going to no, edit so, it out. You know how much work that's going to take to edit this out? Go ahead. I'm listening. No, you'll you just be like, oh, I'm, I'm I'm literally not going to cut it out. I, I want you to put the idea out there. All of y'all are that watch this, yeah. your witnesses, if he's full of shit. I'm putting him in a headlock all the way down. I want you to put the idea out of there, out there, so people, so that the audience Mm -hmm. can decide if it's a good idea. Just interview people about their sexual experiences in the past, how they enjoy it, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy. It's a safe space area. Are you going to tell them your idea for the show? The name or what? No, that is the idea. You just talk about like shit, you know, maybe some shit you've done. No, but tell them the idea about the show. That is the idea. I'm waiting for you to say something. What do you want me to say? The idea for the show. I just said it. When? I'm going to kill this motherfucker right now. It's the South Congress Podcast, episode 85. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you to Permanent RCRC. I can't say it. Good. Permanent RCRD Studios. Not speaking out. You know, I'm, I'm going to Twitter. I make sure you. Per- I'm gonna. I'm gonna report. Gonna find e- old I'm tweets? gonna report every single. Th- yeah, you know, I'm. I got time today. I'm and time tomorrow. I'm going to make sure you are permanently banned. There is no more Seahawk. Thank you. That is what I'm going to do. Permanent RCRD Studios for housing Y'all us for this episode. I'm getting him out of here. Ah, <sighs> my name is Cameron. Now I'm about to kill this motherfucker right here. And we're out. Bye. <laughs>